Shodan is a search engine that lets users search for various types of servers connected to the internet using a variety of filters. It's an OSINT or open source intelligent tool that allows security researchers to find all kinds of devices connected to the internet. For example, if you know that a vulnerable version of a web server has a particular HTTP header, you can just search for that header to find all instances of that vulnerable server online. In order to show off Shodan, we need a vulnerable kind of software to search for. Jupyter Notebooks are a popular tool for Python developers, but if set up insecurely, they often allow remote users to access a shell on the machine. Often, it's a root shell. This makes Jupyter Notebooks a prime target for attackers. Let's craft a Shodan dork, or a special search term, that allows us to find a vulnerable Jupyter Notebooks on the internet. We'll use the title to find notebooks that are logged in without requiring any authentication. The home page of a Jupyter Notebook has the title Home Page Select or Create a Notebook. Additionally, the typical port is 8888. If we can find that text in that title running on that port, the result is probably a Jupyter Notebook. On the docs, we see that we can specify a port using the port tag and the title using the title tag. Thus, our actual dork which, remember, just means a special search term used to find vulnerable devices, will be port 8888 title home page select to create a notebook. Great, now let's try it out. To see if this dork works as expected, let's go on the Shodan website and try it out manually. We see various results pop up. Hmm, let's try clicking one and see if we really have access. Wonderful! We can go further by checking Jupyter's web-based terminal to see what level of access we have. Okay, well, there we have it! Shodan has a free API for anyone with an account. However, since we're coding in Python, we can use the Shodan package from PyPy to interact with the API for us. We'll start by setting up our key and making the query. Then let's print the results and see what happens. Okay, let's try running our script and see what happens. Awesome, it worked! We can see machines with no protection. Remember, by browsing to the terminal of the web interface, we can get a shell on any of these machines.